Hi guys, I'm Greg Hallett. Merry Christmas from me and the Hallett family. And uh, we thought we'd do a little Christmas video for you this year. And we were thinking about what we could do. And I thought I would give you a little bit of a, um, insight into how I arrange Christmas music, or at least one Christmas arrangement that we did this year. And this is something that Kelsey, my daughter, and I did in church this morning. And I'm not going to say that we spent a lot of time on this, but maybe that's part of sort of the perspective that I want you to, to get. Um, I want you to sort of understand the thought process that I went through um, with this. Not earth shattering, um, but maybe it'll be helpful anyway to you. So we're working on the song that you guys know, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. This is one of those songs that's in a minor key. It's an old, old tune. Um, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen actually means God Make You Brave Gentlemen. I don't know if you ever thought about the words, God rest you means actually God make you brave. And so this is a um, sort of a, in my mind at least, a lively song. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be sung like a dirge as you sometimes hear it. And uh, we, we sort of put an upbeat treatment on this. Now um, on Seasonal Spice, I actually recorded this song and I did something a little bit similar and I lifted some of the material actually to be honest. Uh, for this arrangement, but Kelsey came to me Friday and said, hey, we, I got to play in church on Sunday, and I, you know, we sort of take what we can get. But I want to go through what we're doing with this song. Um, again, not that complicated, um, but I want to play just a few, we'll play, as a matter of fact, we're going to play the intro, Kelsey, and then we're going to play the first verse. And uh, here's how it sounds. <laughs> So that's the, um, the beginning of it, and uh, I want to just talk through what we're doing here so far. Um, first of all, let's talk about the harmony, because the harmony is so basic in this particular song, I can talk about it in just a second. Um, really what we're doing is we're playing the same four chords over and over, and the four chords are D minor, D minor 7, D minor 7 over C, um, B flat 7, major 7 actually, B flat major 7, and then um, A7. And when you play the A7, you can do a lot of uh, sort of funky things to it to make it sort of colorful and interesting. Uh, but those are the chords, D minor 7, C7, or D minor over C, um, B flat major 7, and A7. We're in the key, by the way, of D minor, okay? Um, you guys probably already knew that. But that's what we're playing. We're playing those four chords over and over again through the whole song. The intro... Um, Kelsey is going to play a line over those four chords. So I'm going to play this. And then at the end of those four bars, she's going to come in with a line. And when I say a line, I'm talking about a melody line. And uh, really, in this kind of music, what matters is the melody line, um, the melody lines that you write. And again, she came to me this on, on Friday night, and I didn't have a lot of time to work on it, so I said, well, we'll do it very simply. So I gave her a couple of lines that she's going to use this whole song um, in the intro and the interludes and the ending. The first one is just this, right? So play that. And then the second one is this. Okay, so now let's play the intro again and play those two lines over it. She's going to play one of those lines over each one of the little... Okay, so she, that's going to be one of the lines, and then I'm going to repeat it, and she's going to play the second line, which is slightly more complicated than the first line. Okay, so we'll talk about where those lines come from in just a second. I'm going to give you some thoughts on that. Um, the next thing I want to mention is rhythm. Now, depending on where you are and what you like and what your church likes, you may or may not really want to do all the rhythm that I do. Um, but um, when I play this, I'm doing some rhythm. It's not 
really complex, but um, just something like little syncopations there. Um, nothing huge, but something to make it a little more interesting than this, which you can do as well if you wanted to. And maybe in your church that's what works. I don't know, but um, I use a little more rhythm than that. Kelsey, by the way, when she plays it, I want her to syncopate as well. So in other words, instead of just playing the line very straight, I want her to do things like this. Things like that. Now, I'm not going to tell her exactly what to play. She can do what she wants. I just want her to think that way. And so I would tell Kelsey, syncopate the line, but I'm not going to tell her exactly what to syncopate. Just like when I play what I'm playing, I'm not going to tell myself exactly what to do either. I'm going to play it differently every time, um, little rhythms differently. There's a gazillion ways you can do it. Um, but the rhythm is important, but just because a rhythm is important doesn't mean that I'm going to spell out every single rhythmic thing that I'm going to do or that I want Kelsey to do. I hope that makes sense. Now. I want to talk about one other thing before we'll play the whole the whole assi the whole song, not the assignment. I feel like I'm a school teacher sometimes. But before we play the whole thing through, I want to talk about the lines a little bit more. Again, that's really a key to this song. Um, otherwise, it's just the melody, and we're not. You'll see in a second. We're not going to do anything really fancy in the way of development. But the lines are important, and the lines come from a couple of different strategies that we use as arrangers. For example, one of the things you can do is you can look at the chord that you're playing at any given time in the song and then come up with melody notes from that chord. However, there's even a simpler way to do it and that is to create lines from what we call the pentatonic blues scale um, or sometimes you just call it pentatonic or you just call it world music. But world music folk music typically has a five note scale that the musicians use. And as we play it here in just a second, you'll start to hear it. Um, here's what you do. In the, we're in the key of D minor, so I'm going to move to the, the relative major key, which is F major. And then you play one, two, three, five, and six. Okay, so it's a pentatonic scale, which means five. Pentatonic means five. So we're going to play um, F, G, A, C, and D. That's the five notes that we're going to be using um, to make this work. And then we're going to add in one special note. And uh, if we were studying jazz, you'd call this a blues note, um, but it exists in all world music pretty much. But it's what we call the flat three, and it's A flat. Now, the difference between that and this, you hear the difference? That's called a blues note. It's what gives it a little bit of a special pop. Okay, and when I gave Kelsey that first line, the first time I just told her to play this, right? But the next time I want her to use the blues note, so I gave her this line. That's your blues note, okay? So I want her to incorporate that. Now, if I had more time on this arrangement, I would spend a lot of time maybe working out very sophisticated lines based on those six notes. I know we call it a pentatonic scale, but it's really six notes when you throw in the blues note. Um, um, that, for example, that's the whole scale. That sounds good by itself, right? Okay. Um, um, I'm sort of striking out here at the second for the moment. So you, there's a gazillion different lines that you can play um, on top of, of 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 a melody, like just on top of this. Any of those lines will work. Um, they range from very very simple to very very sophisticated. And um, I'll play. As a matter of fact, as we do this arrangement, you'll hear me use some fancier lines than just the one I gave her but they're based on the pentatonic blues scale. And uh, that is really sort of the key um, to this arrangement. We just have a few runs, a pentatonic runs, on top of um, a four chord progression. That progression over and again, over again. The only time we change that progression, by the way, 
is on the third line of the song itself. Uh, it goes like this. We have to change it there. The rest of the song, we're just going to play this over and over again. Okay? And then the interludes, we're going to use the lines. And uh, that'll be the intro and the ending as well. So we're ready to play it. You ready? Okay, so here we go. to the same lines. back to the lines. Kelsey and that is it as you saw the only thing we did is we made the last one a little more complicated and then we tagged it um, with this repeat that twice and then we have the last time something like that all right I hope that was helpful as you can see nothing's written out you really are just thinking at this at this from a, um, a perspective of this is the plan for the song but we're not exactly memorizing every single note. We just have a plan of the form of the arrangement um, that we're going to play, and it works. And uh, you can actually learn arrangements really quickly um, this way. Hope that was helpful. Again, Merry Christmas. We'll see you in 2015.